Hi viewers, I'm Zach Burley with Carolina Forward Interviews where we chat with our elected officials about the issues of today, the future of our state, and about the issues that motivate them. Today I'm with Diamond Staten Williams who is representing District 73 which is Concord, Harrisburg, Cabarrus County. First of all, Representative, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. So now, from Cabarrus County, the area that you represent, can you tell us just a little bit about, about the community, about what makes you love it, and a little bit about yourself as well and, and your background in the area? Yeah, well, I'll start with a little bit about myself. I'm a native North Carolinian. I grew up uh, born and raised in Charlotte, so grew up in Charlotte. We moved to Cabarrus County in 20, 2006 and lived in Kannapolis for a little bit before we um, moved to Harrisburg, North Carolina, where we currently reside. Um, I have a husband three kids, um, two daughters and a son who's 16 and he's a sophomore driving and amazing hitting mailboxes. <laughs> but um, it, it's been a great time. So when we first moved to Cabarrus County, of course, there were not a lot of things to do, but I, now I have seen the community grow. We have a, a fantastic ballpark in Kannapolis, um, great amenities, food, um, and adventures that every every family would love to be a part of. Have you gotten behind the wheel of a, of a race car yet? I know that's big country out there. Have you gotten behind one? <laughs> no, but are I, you planning on it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Well, maybe not maybe not your son just yet. We'll no, wait. Oh, we'll please. Wait. Yeah, please. No. <laughs> Let's get him past this. So I want to start with uh, your political journey because you you began at the really local level. Town council member. Now you sit here as a member of the General Assembly first person of color from Cabarrus County to do so. Uh, what has this ride from your town hall to our state capitol been like and why'd you do it? Well, I originally got into politics just because I wanted to know what was going on, especially in Harrisburg. Um, when we first moved to Harrisburg in 2008, it was farmland. So lots of cornfields, cows, and one day I saw a cornfield being um, removed and wanted to know what was going on. I went on Facebook um, and asked one of my girlfriends who stays on top of everything that I know of and she told me it was a Publix coming. And so I went online and started reading uh, about our planning and zoning in Harrisburg and decided to get more involved. When I saw the representation that we had in Harrisburg, I felt like it, it was needed to have someone with a different perspective um, on the town council at that time and was successful in that campaign in 2017. <laughs> so now what motivates you as far as issues go? Because I mean, you got to have a, a, a want to improve people's lives to be in this job. What issues do you focus on in your job? So I'm a nurse by yeah. training. Um, and one of the biggest things for me is making sure that people have exactly what they need to be successful in yeah. life period. And I think most people would agree with that, that people want to be connected to opportunities. People want to be well. And for me, being well is health care. So connecting people to the services that they need, especially when it comes to mental health care. I think um, if we have not learned anything since 2020 until now, mental health is a real crisis yep. for us all. And we need to make sure that people have access, that they have coverage, for those services and that we're really helping to support our children yeah. in every capacity. I thought it was funny when you and I were walking up here, we said both as an RN and with politics, you deal with the dirty side of human, of human uh, normality. So uh, I think that's quite funny that you've transitioned there as well. So now you flipped a traditionally Republican seat, traditionally Republican county in a Republican wave year election. What do you think factored most into your victory, your success in a Republican area such as that? Well, I think one of the biggest things, well, I don't think, I believe one of the biggest things uh, that occurred in 2022, people have seen me, they know me from the community, they know that I'm going to stand up and stand in the gaps for different things. Yeah. And I also believe that reproductive rights were on the table and that brought up many women out yeah. and men who knew that women need to have autonomy for ourselves. Yeah. So now you represent a big part of Cabarrus County, one of the fastest growing, most diverse areas in our state. Um, as areas like yours have changed, because you can go all over the state and find areas like yours that are changing rapidly, um, how do you think that that has changed the represent, representational needs of your community with that so much growth so quickly? Especially for Cabarrus County, you have yeah. to consider that, again, when I moved in to Harrisburg, North Carolina in 2008, there were 8,000 people, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Um, now there's close to 20,000. Mm -hmm. So in that span of time, we've seen people come from all walks of life, every area of the country. Um, and we have to make sure that how we look as a representative board reflects the people in the community. And that is important for me. And I think that's important for a lot of people that um, want to have their voices heard. We don't want to disenfranchise anyone and we want to be open and available to listen. So now Republicans hold a supermajority in the Senate. They're one vote away in the House. In that kind of atmosphere, how do you manage to effectively represent your district, knowing that not always are the Democrats going to get their way? Right. It has been a change <laughs> from the norm for, for me. I think one of the biggest things, and I've always been great at this, is building relationships with people um, from all walks, walks of life. Um, I think we have more in common than what we propose that we don't. Yeah. Um, and everyone wants to do what's right for people. And if we stick to that and manage that well as representatives, we can get things done for, for people um, that they want to see. So now in North Carolina specifically, Democrats have kind of been on the ropes recently. Um, all the while, the, the GOP has shifted further and further right. Outside of legislation, just as a, as a political leader, how do you respond to the polarization that has increased so rapidly over the last few years? You know, personally, uh, it is a scary time, yeah. truly, truly. You can't um, really count on people to use logic. Mm. Um, and that's unfortunate. One thing that I know about people, if they listen to something consistently that can be untrue and they have a conviction about it, you will be unable to change their hearts and their mind. Um, however, I think it's all of our responsibilities to listen to each other. Um, and while I may not agree with what is being said, I do need to listen. And that's important. So let's sw talk a little bit about legislation. Um, last year, Republicans in the House killed the medical marijuana bill even after it had already passed through the Senate. Do you think there are any hopes of the medical marijuana bill coming back to the House this session? I absolutely do. I think one of the biggest things that we've seen, especially, is that Medical, medical marijuana is a growing cash cow, right? Um, it is not only going to help us and people feel better who um, absolutely need it for compassionate yeah. care, but it will also help our farmers. Um, and that's important because that's a, an additional resource and income source for them. Exactly. Uh, now, a lot of people were hopeful that 2022 would be the year that uh, North Carolina finally expanded Medicaid. Um, even though Republican leaders said they supported it, they couldn't pass a bill last time around. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do you see Medicaid expansion in this year passing at all? I absolutely do. I think both um, the Speaker of the House as well as uh, the Senate Majority Leader, um, Senator Berger, are in agreement that Medicaid expansion needs to happen. I, I also believe people are now seeing the economic impacts. There was a lot of money left on the table when we didn't take Medicaid yeah. um, those 10 years ago. I think and believe is necessary. Yeah. I want to close with this. Um, people talk about getting involved. People talk about wanting to have a role in their community. Uh, you've been an example of that. I mean, you literally were talking about how you wanted to be more involved in the issues that were occurring, and so you decided to run for town council. And that has now led you to the streets of Raleigh and in the halls of our capital. Um, for people out there that want to get involved, um, that want to have a role, obviously maybe being a state representative isn't the end goal, but what advice or what motivation would you give to them that no matter what your background is, that you can still have an impact both in your community, in your state, in our nation? Absolutely. So one of the biggest things that impacted me and got me involved in just not volunteering, but volunteering for a purpose. Yeah. Um, I went to a North Carolina Nurses Association Leadership Account. A, 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 NCNA, North Carolina Nurses Association Leadership Academy in 2013. You know, you're going to have to edit that part. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in 2013, Representative at the time, Gail Adcock, now Senator Gail Adcock, who's also a nurse, nurse practitioner, came and talked about how she got involved in the community. Um, and one of the things that she said that resonated with me was, we're nurses. We know things about everything. We know how important it is for parks to be able to be in our community. We know how important water is to our communities. We know 
We know these things, get involved. So I went online and many people can do this in any county that they're in. Go online and go to your town's advisory boards. So there, the advisory board that I'm on and still on since 2014 is our Adult Care Homes Committee for Cabarrus County. And I spend time with a, another group of, a group of volunteers that go to assisted living facilities, talk to residents, talk to the staff in those areas, just to see if they have needs and making sure that their rights are being met. So that's the small step. Go online, volunteer in any capacity. You'll meet fun people. Um, <laughs> you'll learn more about your community yeah. that, than what you previously knew. And then it can spark different things. Well, Representative, first of all, I want to say thank you for your service. Um, I think it's incredible that you have the story of being passionate about something, finding ways to get involved, and then now look where you are. So I yeah. think that's incredible. Uh, it's been so much of a pleasure speaking with you, and I can't wait for everyone to see this because it, it's really been a pleasure. But well, thank you. <laughs> Folks, this has been another edition of Carolina Forward Interviews. Go out and check out the ones we have already produced, and the ones we have in store will be coming out. It's been so much fun bringing these to you. So tune in all of our social media channels to check them out. Thanks for your time.